Their cousins still roam St Kilda's Soe, shedding their wool without help every spring. For seven thousand years so far, they say, these sheep have stood steadfast against the sting and bite of the Atlantic gales. Grass, fat, immovable, muddy, ash-brown storm clouds. But on Little de Mun, no more's the splat of their hoofs heard, sucking at mud. The crowds of ovines over those lit and rich rocks are a shaggy, domesticated breed. Although these short-tailed, ancient, landlocked stocks of Scots cousins by the bullet were freed, three of them survive still, stuffed behind glass, mossy-coated cast-offs on astro grass. While that other Valky, Alexander, sips on his vodka, kalua and cream from his palace in Europe's beating heart, contemplating the European dream, talking of lies and slander with candour, of a reign of teddy bears from Sweden, violated airspace, his country's part in crushing Hitler, his land, an Eden of oil pipelines through shallow mass graves in radioactive forests frozen in the vision of Stalin, Lenin, Marx, still aches. The continent's last king just craves a crown that fits. But his folk, the chosen white women and men of Rus, expect sparks. The bear and the lion seek your honey, but neither has yet taken out your tongues. You share jokes, but they don't find you funny. Neither can carry your singular songs. Jason met Medea in Sukhumi. While he was searching for a golden fleece, he told her, This thing that you do to me equals no less than a breach of the peace. Amirani stole from you your fire and was left on Mount Elbrus to shiver, chained to a pillar box with razor wire for an eagle to feast on his liver. That union of sky god and earth mother was your door from one world to another. In Sahara's sunset's shade lies a wall, only a few years older than I and not much to look at by all accounts, just a squint on the horizon that's as tall as a man or maybe two, built from sand or stone or sandstone. It looks like a gust of wind might set it level from the air, but from down there it's the difference between a kingdom's colony and a free zone, order and chaos, unloved and unknown, sewerage system and hand dug latrine. Like many man-made things it's far from fair and could so easily be swept away. But that's so few. No, it is there today. That was called Sonnets from the Corners of the Map. Each part of that is a sonnet and each one, you guessed it, takes part in a different corner of the map or a map and fittingly being as the one before that was called where is the heart of europe those are four vague possible arguable corners of the european cultural sphere
Oh, it's not a sphere, obviously, because a, a sphere doesn't have four corners. They are in the order that I read them, from northwest to southwest, clockwise. The Faroe Isles, Belarus, the Caucasus region generally, but more specifically Abkhazia, and Spanish Sahara, also known as Western Sahara, furthermore known as Morocco, if you're Moroccan. What to say about that really? So yeah, that wasn't meant to be one poem originally, because I, I wrote one poem, which was, uh, I think the first one I wrote was the first one I read there, the one about um, sheep, and that was just a poem I wrote because I saw a picture of a sheep on Wikipedia. The second one I wrote was actually the fourth one I read, uh, The Berm, which I wrote because I thought it was out of order that Western Sahara, despite not being recognised as part of Morocco by any country in the world or any major international body, remains in control of Morocco, the Moroccan government and the Moroccan people. But, uh, you know, that's just how history works. Eventually people will give up trying to recognise it as what it was or what they think it was supposed to be because every land in the world that has a political identity now has achieved that via some form of violence, provocation, bending and breaking various rules and treaties. Anyway, what was the third one I wrote? The third one I wrote was the uh, Belarus one uh, about Alexander Lukashenko. It says the other Velky Alexander because Velky with a small v uh, means great in various Slavic lang languages. It's normally got a an accent or a, a, a sort of apostrophe thing but uh, and then I, I really wrote Caucasian fables the more kind of bouncy one that's a bit more difficult to read uh, in an effort to complete this as a coherent thing I'm really sure it worked but near enough 